thought that was going to be a good time to stop the music and it kept going. It was too good. Let me see. This one goes here and I've got a little corner. There we go. Is that better? Okay. Oh, um, yes, I'm back today. Yeah, we can do some substance. What, what do you want to texture? We can hop in there. How you doing, John? <laughs> Zephyrus. Yeah. 5 a.m. Yeah. I, um, I don't know what it is about streaming days where I wake up early for no reason. My brain gets me up and then I try to fall back asleep. And then when I, right when I fall back asleep, my alarm goes off. So, yeah, I was listening to it too. I was like, oh, it's six o'clock. Do I just let the music go? Let me plug my whack -em in. There we go. Wait for it. Wait for it. Yay. All right. What do y'all want to do? Uh, what do you want to texture John? Um, actually, one thing I was looking to do, there was a an idea on it. So, um, I got my 3D printer up and running. There's going to be a video about that. I think on Monday I'll drop that. I think it's ready. Um, let me go into, what were we doing? We were streaming Christmas Oogie Boogie uh, Dice. I'm going to see if I can't set these up real quick. Um, so... We have our dice here and lay it. Well, let's talk about this. In yesterday's live stream, which of course you can find if you go in here to my playlist and you look for the Big Blue Genie. The last live stream we did is right here and we talked about the making of these dice if you're just joining us now. Um, I didn't put it on my station page, but if you want to see the making of this Oogie Boogie guy, you can check that out. So right at the top, there you go. The two links I'm going to be spamming you with throughout, I'm sure. Um, but we have this pair of dice here that we've created, and it's pretty dense. It's 6.25 million. How many subtools we got in here? Oh, we have some backup dice. So basically what I want to do is make these reasonable. So we're going to go in here to Z plugin, Decimation Master Preprocess Current. And while it's doing that, I'm going to check here. Um... You know, I don't have my music playlist where I get my music from song. Oh, okay, two places. Production Crate and let me look. I'll walk you through my music here. So we have audio library. I got some boom music sound effects, uh, sound effects, and then I have some so story blocks and Sonu score. No, story blocks is where. I, um, I think I get like three three downloads from them a month, and then my other one is Production Crate. Uh, production crate. Uh, so if I double click this, this is also a really cool. Turn this, down. this is a really cool app. Um, it's, it's like an organizer for your sound effects and your music and stuff, and if you ever want to take like little chunks of a sound effect or a music, you can, um, you can alt tap to marker, and it's shift to grab and then you can uh, I think there's it's been a while since I've done it but there's something in here where you can just literally just save this out as its own uh, wave file that you can dump into your your recordings and stuff um, so that's one and then production crate I use for a bunch of stuff um, no we can let's talk about that production crate login sure so in here, they have um, a bunch of, like, if you ever see me dropping in, like, little sparks or dust, uh, like in the walking guys here. Where is that at? Boy, it's been that long already. Ooh-wee. Um, so, for example, here. Wait for it. You can see the dust kind of going through, and you're going to see some sparks over here, and you're going to see some dust in the lens. Um, this was all dropped in from their... VFX here, so fire and sparks, you can just go and grab those and drop them into your video files. And then also they do have SFX and music, royalty free music in here. Uh, so, you know, I don't know, hip hop. So I can just download that, wake you guys up, sorry, and uh, drop it in there. Anyway, this is done. So I'm going to drop this down to, I don't know, 100,000 polygons, decimate. 
And then uh, let's turn polyframe off so we can see we didn't lose anything major. We're not getting like major faceting in there. I haven't run into any issues with file sizes and Chichu box or anything like that for 3D printing. So I don't know. I've 3D printed one whole thing in my life. Well, two whole things. One was a sample file and one was my gorilla skull. Uh, oh, if you want those gorilla skulls, I can link you to that real quick. Sketch fab and thingy verse. Uh, let me see. My models and so this here, Pavlovich models is you can download. It's the ZBrush file, the STL files, the CTB files, the Chichibox file, and then on. Oh boy, don't sign up. Just log me in, please. Yep. And where am I at? My designs. There we go. So. And also on Thingiverse, you can download those. Osmose, I'm doing good. How are you doing? And then there's the Sketchfab. Um, and again, you can download these. So if you want to, again, I'm going to be putting the video up Monday, but it's nothing you, everyone else in the world probably doesn't already know. Uh, but you can get those and you can print it out along with me if you'd like. Um, but like I was saying, those are pretty heavy and Chichi Box seem to be fine. So maybe, maybe I'll test some limits here. I don't know, 150. That looks pretty good. I think that'll print out fine. So let's go ahead and export this. I'm just going to jump this right on my desktop like a real pro. And we're going to go down here to STL and we'll call this dice. And it's going to be selected. It's fine. Hey, exported. So now if I open up, well, the bad thing, not bad thing, it's I record a 1080 sized square on my screen and shoot you box really doesn't like that it's it was difficult to fit it in here consistently we'll see how it does yeah it just it just doesn't quite want to give me enough room uh so we're going to go in here to open and we're going to go to my desktop here grab the dice and let me get a drink I got filtered water today, so hopefully it's a little easier in my throat. Man, Tuesday was rough. Ooh, and that's tiny. Let's go in here to scale to fit. Boom, now we got a monster dice. Um, yeah, why not? Uh, let's see. So <laughs> let's scale this down just a little bit. Uh, all right, and let's rotate this. I was watching a video, so let's say 45 degrees. Come on, there we go. Here, and uh, I was watching a dice video. I should probably go find that. It's been a minute, but it was basically putting on supports. You know what do I need to do? Another rotation this way. Oh, there we go, negative 45, it's right there, oops. Um, there we go. So basically what we're looking for when you want to print out supports, if I was to do this flat on the bottom, number one, you might get some major suction, although there's enough stuff going on here where that might not be a, an issue. And again, I'm just saying stuff that I hear online. I don't know anything, so take this with a grain of salt. But the other thing you need to worry about is you don't want your supports having to uh, put go on the cool parts of your thing, uh, which isn't great. So actually, let me see if I can. Eh, you know what? Let's just do it. Uh, so I'm going to go over here to supports now, and that's going to automatically lift my Z height. So it's going to get it up off the build plate there. And let's just do medium and let's do all. I'm not sure what it's going to do. Probably something pretty gross. Yeah, so it's putting a bunch of supports in here. What I was seeing, you know what, and I'll go back and see if I can find that video and I'll do this later without boring you, you all. Um, but let me see. Let me do a... Uh, you know what? And this is where it gets in trouble. Just give me a little more space. There we go. Remove all. Yes. So basically, and the other cool thing too is when I was um, going through and doing these, uh, the light supports like just like snapped off. They like crackled off when I just kind of pushed on them. And then the heavy ones, I had to go in there and kind of clip them. Most of them, um, I'm not sure what the medium would do, but I suppose that I probably need a heavy maybe to start with, and then we'll go into, I'm gonna try 
medium. And what I was seeing, so if I go up here, you're going to see there's no real, there's no islands happening. It's except for maybe right there, there's an island. We can mark that one. So basically going through here and looking for those pesky islands to support as it goes up. And then the other thing too, is if this was a very sharp dice, basically what he did was go through here and just go just support this entire edge all the way down. And the cool thing is this is kind of a raggedy edge in the design anyways, it's kind of chewed up. So if I don't clean up the support super well, probably not a huge deal. So I don't know, something, we'll, we'll maybe give something like this a shot and we'll see if mediums are enough. I don't know. I really, I truly don't know, uh, but this weekend I'll give that a shot. Okay. Um, Marco, thanks for the kind words. Um, top top, I'm doing good. <laughs> Sorry, hopefully it's worth you waking up that early, Zephyrus. I don't know that I'm, I'll have something good to go. Uh, yes, I'm doing well. How's everybody? Uh, do you prefer normal tablets or display ones? Normal, just flat ones. Um, display tablets, they're nice and they're expensive. And if, and if I'm doing like really fine ink work, um, like if I'm in Photoshop and I need to do some really, really precise work in there or even in ZBrush, I suppose, um, it's nice to have, you know, the, just drawing right on the screen. Um, but just for like general sketching, uh, what do we do? We'd be like 850 by 660. You know, I would basically, uh, so let's see, we'll turn this on and we'll, we'll sketch a little bit. So, uh, excuse me if I'm a little bit rusty. So here on my normal tablet, you can just see I, my, I can move my hands faster and it's also a little bit, I don't know, a little bit freer. And so when I'm in ZBrush, I move a lot faster on my tablet than I would a display screen because I'd have to move my arm everywhere to hit all my menus. And number two, uh, I'm kind of leaning over it, my arms up in the air for eight hours, 10 hours, 12 hours a day. Uh, and that's <laughs> that's back in the days when uh, I, I was actually a production artist. So I don't know how true that is anymore. So we're gonna put some legs on here and then we're gonna, uh, what's a good superhero pose? Yeah, and then arm over here. Doo -doo -doo -doo. And then we'll put a little head on here. Whoosh. Nah, it's a little off center there. There we go. Now we're talking. Superhero. And then uh, ooh, we'll put that on the background. So I'm going to grab this. Control, copy, paste, fill, oh, default X, Alt, e, L. Oop. There we go. And then we're going to take this one. And let's position this one here. And then we're going to drop down this opacity here. And you know what? We'll stay zoomed out. So now we have our rib cage. So here's our basic, here's our rib cage shape. And if you missed it, we kind of did a mannequinization thing where we went through ZBrush. So we can actually test, if you want to, we can go through and we can test how accurate I was or if I have any problems with perspective, this is a, a good way to do that. But here's my rib cage, basically my rib cage shape here. And then if you've ever seen I mean, there's probably more people that do this, but um, David Finch, he puts on, basically, so here's your, he puts on a chest line and then a, just kind of a expanded shoulder section, I think. And then this is where the neck kind of goes in. So again, just the basic shapes. And then here's the underwear shape. So it's not necessarily like, um, you know, a uh, hips or a, I guess it would be more of a box would be a better shape to start with, but um, what would this be? The ischium down here, and then the superior asis, anterior superior iliac crest, and then it kind of swoops around and does all this zany stuff. It's totally useful to know that information. But if you're just getting something quick for volumes, you know, and on, on this, the rib cage, about as wide as the pelvis here, uh, just add a little bit of shoulders. And then if you've seen like how to draw manga, You've probably seen this type of thing where you've got your proportions kind of dialed in, but now you need some volume work. So you go in here and um, we'll put in our little leg cones here just to kind of work through and to kind of test your volumes. Again, I'm, I'm quite rusty, but if I need fidelity out of this, instead of 
going in with my screen, my Cintiq screen, I would just zoom in and then suddenly I have more fidelity from my tablet uh, for finer work. Not to say that this is necessarily fine work, um, but you know, getting in there and doing what I, what I need to do. So, and then from here, it's just anatomy. So this is the funner part, I think. So here we have the chest line and we have our egg shape, but now we need to think about, okay, so here's, uh, here's where the muscles would go. And also the midline and then, you know, perspective, you know, and I don't have real perspective on here, but so here's where the chest muscles would kind of hang down. And then, you know, you got a humerus in here and you've got your neck in here and then there's your sternal notch. And then, you know, you've got that clavicle that's going to kind of sweep around and hit that acromion process on both sides. It's going to be shorter on this side because the, it's, he's kind of turned away from us. And then, you know, your humerus is sitting in there. So now, you know, the deltoid, I'm saying this, the deltoid attaches on the clavicle here and then all the way back around on that scapula, which you could kind of maybe poke out here a little bit, but, um, we're gonna have lats covering that up. So here's this, uh, the deltoid here, the three heads of the deltoid going halfway down, and eh, not halfway down, three heads below the ball of the humerus, I think. Or no, maybe that's where the pec attaches, I forget. Uh, the pec is gonna have three attachment points, the clavicle, st uh, sternum, and then here on your ribs down to your fifth rib. And then that's gonna kind of wrap around to the exact same thing on the other arm, and you can kind of just dot through. Here's where that other arm's gonna be sitting. And then, so now you've got that acromion process. Oh, and up here too, you've got your neck, your sternocleomastoideus here, whatever it's called. And then uh, this is the traps on the backside here, and that's gonna go through and connect down. And then you've got your head in here. So now I'll just dial in this head shape here. Oh, we could probably test our head. It looks okay, but you know, midway through the body is, let's do this here. So yoink, you, you. Let's back up a little bit. There is our midline. And then halfway in between is our chest line and then head here. So four heads and then, you know, four more heads. So eight heads total for a nice heroic proportions here. And then your bicep's going to be in front of your pec. I think it's going to tuck underneath. And then again, you've got your volumes on here, but if you're doing a superhero, that's when you can start packing it on. So then you can go in here and be like, here's my tricep, my brachialis, and then my bicep here and then your ridge muscles or your um what is that uh, so you got the lateral epicondyl the humerus and then you've got your um what is that that is your uh <laughs> that's what happens when number one you're rusty and number two you're tired and number three you're not very smart like me uh so now we've got the here's the ulna back here so that means the radius is here and then the ulna and then the lateral and medial epicondyl of the humerus and then this is going to wrap around to the thumb side uh there we go and then these are your extensors so those are your extensors on this side and this in particular is two right there and one of them is called the radial <laughs> brachial brachial radialis does that make sense yes because that goes to the radius side of the thumb and the brachial, brachial radialis, I think that's what it is. Jeez. And then here you've got the hand. I don't know what this hand is doing. Something cool. Holding the, holding the um, lollipop. And then, uh, okay, so in here, you're going to have the lats. They're gonna, we're going to pack some lats really on there. And that's going to come and tuck up underneath inside your armpit here. And then kind of this shape here, the nipples out is a good enough line to determine like where the, on the ribs your serratus anterior which is going to go and attach on the inside back of the scapula uh, and then your obliques are going to just kind of finger their way in between like little fingers here it's probably an appropriate way to say that but and then here's that ridge of the uh, that rib cage here and then underneath here so this is where your rectus abdominis is and again you want to keep track of that midline and then here's your rectus abdominis. And then on the male, it's going to be, you know, you're going to have, and again, we're idealized talking now, so don't take this with a grain of salt, but here's that rib cage here. So you're going to have this kind of shape, and then it's going to go down, and then you're going to have like a boxy um, abs, and this is your abs shape here. 
if we're doing a male, if we're doing a female, uh, it'd be a little slenderer through the uh, rib cage and then out to a little bit uh, wider hips. And then the stomach shape wouldn't be like this. It would be a little more uh, gradual here and then neck and then neck and then uh, what's that traps and then a little more slender traps makes the neck look longer and then breast versus pecs and then you get that shape as opposed to that shape so on him he's gonna have those obliques kind of spilling out over the interior superior iliac crest and then this one's gonna kind of just swoop over uh, so then we've got okay so here and we got this and then this is gonna step down and then to the crotch here and then for this uh, legs here you've got the sartorius which is going to be the dividing line between the adductors and the vastus medialis and the vastus lateralis you got a tensor fascia latte right here down to your so here we drew the the uh uh, what's this called pelvis <laughs> here and then there's going to be a little cup in there that holds your femur the head the head of the femur and then here's your great trochanter and that's going to kind of come out like so so that's where all this stuff is going to attach your gluteus medius gluteus maximus uh, actually your gluteus maximus probably comes down here a little bit and then is his leg kind of twisted weird i think it is we'll move the knee over a little bit and then so rec vastus medialis vastus lateralis is going to be curvier on the inside here and that's going to swoop around your tibia and your and your fibulas on the outside so that's going to make this side a little bit straighter and then in here you're going to have your what is that gastrocnemius calf muscle so higher lower and then lower higher like so and then your little foot C here and then same thing on the outside um, rectus femoris in here is that what that is this one right here and this one actually connects a little bit lower than the asus uh, and then this kind of connects up like this and then you got a knee in here and then you've got some fat in the tibia under the knee here and then all this steps back so here's your adductor and then here you got a little bit of fat and nerves in the back of your knee and then again that gastrocnemius and then there's that foot and then a little bit of muscle tibialis anterior i think gives that a slight curve and then you've got your feet there's other stuff going on in there but i'll be damned if i remember what it is and then uh one robot arm so here we're gonna have a big old i don't know something connector and then you can have a little robot thing coming through put some cylinders in here and um Maybe have something that comes across. So here's his robotic hand. And we can say, so on the pinky side here, you just have his thumb well, out. What kind of hand is that? Come on, Mike. <laughs> uh, okay, you know what? We're just going to have him doing um, the old, let me think, here, pinky towards us, and then finger away from us. bunch this up so here's the arnold terminator arm and then uh so on the pinky side here pinky side goes your ulna so this can maybe i don't know do something in here and then on the thumb side uh yeah i guess that's right would go to the uh, radius side and maybe you can put some wires in here or um some of those what was that game called cyber not cyberpunk um crisis some some crisis uh muscles on there you know those little um oh and then the head so halfway down the head is kind of the eye line here and then you're gonna have ears between the brow and the nose and here's the mouth very serious mouth nice nice jawline i'm jealous and then big masculine brow line and um, cool bull haircut from the Three Stooges. Bam. We nailed that or what? Cool. I don't know why we did that.
Oh yeah, we were talking about um, tablets versus <laughs> Cintiqs. Uh, and then and then you would ink it. So the whole point of this was to go through and draw something and then do some detail stuff. So you know, here's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna say merge down and we're gonna go in here to image size and we're gonna say uh, 2200. Boom, look at these pixels. So now we got a little more resolution and then uh, we'll go ahead and again, we'll just dumb this down just a little bit here. We're gonna put another one on here. And I'm gonna turn off this kind of sketchy mode and we're gonna go into ink mode. Uh, and by that, I just mean turning off, what is that? Pressure for opacity. I still have uh, pressure for size, and now it just looks a little more inky. Am I using special brushes? No, but of course you can download cool brushes. I got a ton in here. Uh, do I use them? Nope, because I'm not a, not a real artist. But, uh, so now we can go through here and be like, um, you can drop in some lines and then give them a big old Roman nose here and then I don't know what kind of lips would he have I guess nondescript and then here's his eye so the inner canthus is going to attach you know to your inside of your skull here uh, towards the insides there so that's going to be and honestly I probably wouldn't normally ink this fast I do a couple more honestly I wouldn't ink at all I don't do that kind of thing but if I was going to ink I would do a couple more passes because I'm a little bit nervous because I really don't know what I'm actually doing with this character uh, so I would do another few rounds of sketches so let's do that delete I'm gonna make this a little less harsh here I'm gonna turn back on my sketchy opacity and now we're just gonna figure out okay now I feel a little bit better. I don't feel as shaky about like, oh, what the heck? I'm, I'm sketching too early. So now we can go through here and we can kind of figure out, okay, here's his eyebrow. He's looking um, this way. What kind of story are we telling? What do we want the people to know about this? So this is a Three Stooges uh, hero with that cool haircut here. So here's the upper lip and then it's going to get darker in the corners of the mouth. And then here's the little nodes on the side of the mouth and under the oh and another thing too let's do i'm gonna merge this down again uh, i'm gonna flip my canvas because you can start seeing this face kind of slide off which isn't great so oops and let's also take this opacity down here okay so now i can be like hey mike this stuff needs to actually go on the face. So here's the face and then the the mouth cylinder and then the chin comes out here. So that way that I can stop my features from sliding off my face. So here the eyeball's okay. And then the mouth actually needs to be way out here. And the chin way out here. Cheekbone, brow, here and then uh, again the ear between the brow and the nose generally speaking and then a little bit over here and then this little helix will kind of pop out a little bit and you have a little thing here tragus and anti-tragus and all that nonsense and then here again you're just finding that midline so your neck's back behind poking out here and then let's really make this bull haircut kind of sit you know put a little more a little more line in here Maybe put a few, yes. Okay, and then uh, you're on the back of the head. So here's our head from the side. Here's where you have your, your jaw down the middle and then here's your eye line and then here's your nose and the teeth, the teeth cylinder like we were talking about in the chin. And then you got a little bit of meat. There's your occipital protuberance and then your neck. Uh, so here on the back of the skull, is your mass something some there's a big bony thing that your <laughs> sternomastoid mastoid process uh mastoid process here maybe uh goes to the clavicle so that's where that wraps around to and then it comes in here and attaches to the clavicle and then also a little a little bit over here and then your trapezius 
attached to the occipital protuberance, the, the basically the little point on the back of your head, and then also a little bit on the clavicle, and then goes down the back. So that's where this little ridge comes in. And then this little bump here is your clavicle going through that acromion process. Here's the heads of the, of the, what is this, deltoid? Deltoid means triangle, maybe? And then here, so here's where the, you might have a little sinus cavity in there, and then in here is where you're, and we'll give, make him really ripped, because he's been three stooging it up, so Bruce Lee style. And again, so here is your, you got your sternum, yoink, little knife shape here. And then as your pecs, and here's your clavicle, so as your pecs attach, I, uh, I, th I think I remember in Scott Eaton's class, like, where the, is that the manubrium? Sternum, and then you have basically the square, and then the knife right here uh, is where you tend to kind of get a, a, a separation on your pec, too. And I mean, if you're super ripped and stuff, you'll have all sorts of cool stuff happening in there, but... That, that one kind of stuck with me. Uh, and then it goes in, actually, it's maybe a little bit higher. These should probably attach a little bit higher. Because again, three fingers down from the head of the humerus, probably right here-ish. Here, and then, there we go. So, uh, so now that I've sketched this out a little bit more, I feel a little bit more um, sure of myself. Not really, but, you know, we'll put some lower eyelids on here. Um, okay, and then we'll drop that opacity just a little bit more, and then again, now we'll go into ink mode. So now, when I go in here, make my draw size a little bit smaller, now we can go in and be like, okay, big, confident lines where I, and I don't even know the lighting's coming in, maybe this direction. Um, so here. They keep this lighter maybe or you know what I'm gonna switch it just because that's easier that's what artists do right <laughs> they just take the easy route oh here's that bridge of the nose where your skull is so again your skull is kind of sitting in here and then this kind of pops out again for that toothy toothy thing and then here's your what do they call that I forget and then you've got this thing that kind of folds over and that goes around for your brow ridge. So anyway, so that's where the the cartilage kicks in. And then here's your little nostril wing here. And then again, maybe put a little hint of a nostril wing, or maybe even really thicken this line up if it's supposed to be all shadowy over here, right? And then here, go down. And then we'll kind of draw in a little bit of that eye here. Boy, I botched that one. See, this is why working digitally is great for me because uh, I'm not sweating the details, am I? Okay, and then uh, this mouth here, again, a little darker on this side, maybe a little heavier, and then uh, heavier in the corners. And then, uh, yeah, here's underneath the lip. And then brow, cheekbone. We'll age him just a little bit. And you know what? Maybe he on the sides here, it's not totally clean shaven. You need to add a little bit of dots here. Ear hole, auditory meatus is back in there. And then your jawline here, to the chin. We'll give him a little bit of a John Ham. Dark, dark, dark. And then that beautiful bull haircut. Dark. And then maybe a little shadow underneath here on these sides. And then up and around. A little darker on this side. And this is where, <clears throat> if I was doing real ink work, I might go in with my Cintiq and dial this in. But you can see, you can get, you know, you just zoom in a little bit. And there we go. We have our, uh, who's that, Mo? 
Mo was one of the Three Stooges that looked like that. Um, okay, let me scroll back up here, sorry. Uh, tips for hard surface and ZBrush. Oh, I never get this question. I'm so excited to talk about it. So here's some tips for you. I got a whole page dedicated to hard surface tips and ZBrush. It's called the Hard Surface Linear Walkthrough. Share, get link, copy link, done. And I'm not going to hit enter just yet because I don't want to lose my place. Um, hmm. You know of anybody that helps with their portfolio, like quick overviews and maybe a little more detailed look. Uh, I want to say Tomas Wittelbach uh, does on his live streams, but there's also the Rookies um, at CGMA where I moonlight. Um, they do portfolio review type stuff, so you can check that out. The Rookies, I think, that's what they're all about. I could be wrong, though. Um, <laughs> my celebrity tattoo. Uh, regular Wacom too. Your hand is in the way, so annoying on touch screen. That's a good point too. It's been so long since I've used the Cintiq that I I wouldn't really I would forget. Uh, you any good at drawing? Would you consider it an advantage when it comes to three D art? It's funner for sure. Uh, it was really I I thought it was really fun to kind of do this, you know. And in fact, what's really bothering me with this now is we're gonna keep going, guys. So. Here, I wonder if I can. I always have a bad experience with fill. Like it never, it works. It never works, and then when it does work, it it kind of gives me a halos, and I have ended up having to just do cleanup work anyway. So I'm hoping with AI. Oh damn! Oh, we're gonna redo that edit. I was like, oh, I didn't get it quite right, and I didn't realize I was still on the same brushstroke. Um, AI and machine learning, they can, that's one thing that's bothered me since like 1998. And you know what, let's drop this opacity. You know, we can turn this back on and I'm just gonna do just a really light wash here. And then we need some anisotropic, right? This type of thing. So I think we can turn this back off and I'm, okay, how do we do that? Let's go grab lasso and I'm just going to go through here and just grab like a chunk and let's go grab a gradient basics black to white any of these work or does it just get filled with white let's go back in with our brush and I don't really think that through. There's there's a part right here which I should probably lean into. Um, I don't know. Somebody find me a tutorial on hair. <laughs> uh, something like that, maybe. Um, realistic eyebrows with fiber mesh. We can maybe get into that. Uh, that's just putting very few fibers in that direction and then literally just taking your move brush and your pinch brush and making it. Um, sculpture for you know, zebra slate learning, uh, working on learning measurements for STL file. That's a good point. So when we drop that into chichu boxes, very, very small, if we were doing this for real, what we could do is we could make this a very precise size. So Z plugin scale master here. And there's also 3d print utilities in here too. Let me see if I can find it. USD format. No. 3D Print Hub. I should probably learn this, huh? So here's where you can type in like your size ratios in millimeters or inches or mesh volume and all sorts of cool stuff in the 3D Print Hub. I don't know very much about it. Scale Master, I don't know too much about either, but here's Scale Master and how it works. And in fact, that first screen in here, you can go in and click this. And this is a video by Mr. Joseph. Oh, it's unavailable. Well, Google it then. And then you can watch uh, how it works, but sliders, some tool. let me put in, here, let's just do, let's keep this intro, let's keep this simple. I'm gonna put in a, how big is a dice? Well, Google time. How big is a dice? Half inch, millimeters. What size are normal dice? How, why is this hard? 
five millimeters or three sixteenths inches are extremely small. Eight millimeters, uh, 12 millimeters or half inch dice are currently found. Okay, board game, so 12 millimeters. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say 12 millimeters and I'm gonna put in, oh, this is a one unit helper. Set scene scale, okay, the size of the selected sub 12 generic units and converts to millimeters. So let's go ahead and say, yeah, this is two millimeters currently. And then I'm gonna put in a one unit helper. Export options, that was weird. Okay, that makes sense. So this is one unit. So if I want it to be 12 millimeters, you know, it'd be something like this, but I can still use this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in here to preferences Uh, what am I looking for? Transpose units. And I'm just gonna put this whole thing over here. So I'm gonna hit Y to go into gizmo mode. And we're gonna go up here. So this is one unit in our scene. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, uh, minor ticks is going to be zero. Major ticks is going to be one. Unit scale is one. Calibration distance. Set units, millimeters. So now if I drag this out, I get one unit. So now, there's also probably a way, there's gotta be a way for me to scale this entire thing to be like, hey, this thing right here, make it 12 millimeters. Size options. Hmm, I should really, uh, I'm out of my element. I'm out of my element here. I don't want to update my size ratios. I just want to per sub tool for, uh, for all sub tools. Yep, yep. Well, I can I can also do this. So here I'm going to scale this out. So I'm going to hit E, and I know I want to go. So here's two. I'm two millimeters right now. So here's six. Um. One, two, three, wait, one, two, three, there's six. Here's eight. I'm gonna drag this up here. And we're gonna keep scaling. So basically I'm looking for, uh, what was it, 12? So one, two, three, four, five, six. So this next one gives me six millimeters on both sides. And so this is going to be, and I'm also gonna do I hit W, hit Y, go to Unmesh Mesh Center, and I'm gonna hit this home. So it puts it bloop, right in the middle of my scene. And then go back to Y and we can remeasure this. So now we have one millimeter measurements on our transpose line. And we got one, two, three, four, five, six from the middle, so 12 total. So that would be a 12 millimeter size dice. So let's also test this. So I'm gonna go in here to export, drop it onto our Desktop here, we're gonna call this 12 millimeter dice. And let's see what that did. So now, if I go in here to new project, sorry, can't navigate in here very quickly. Uh, because I'm not good at it, not because it's not a fast program. So, uh, okay, open. And we're gonna say, here's 12 millimeter die. Give it a sec. And then open, and our original is here, and that should come in really tiny. There it is. Yeah, that's about what I remember. Huh, okay, I think that worked. Um, you could go to zero to professional 3D arts, no drawing skills, oh, I was gonna help you if you wanna learn both. Yeah, I, I, there's no reason not to, it's just fun. Uh, but I do agree, Daniel, that um, 
absolutely there are 3D artists out there that can't draw the way out of the paper bag. I'm kind of one of them. I don't draw a ton. For sure. Um... <laughs> cool. Uh, do, do, do. Way to apply an alpha with surface noise uniformly over a subtool rather than having it apply in stages and having it stretch into formant sides. Yes, let's talk about that. I can get you. Uh, or Loomis's method. A uh, good, good call out. Uh, Andrew Loomis, go look him up. Uh, surface noise. Oh, yeah, we did get a surface noise update. I forgot about that. Um, we're going to use you can do a poor man's marble designer stitch things together in flat mode and then use cloth tools in 3D. Uh, maybe. I think in Houdini you could. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the rookies. If you look that up, the rookies CG or the rookies art, um, they they can. I think they do a lot of that type of thing. So for the pixel logic, uh, pixel logic Maxon Union, appreciate. You might not be able to say much. I I can't say anything because I don't know anything. But I like I said in the last live stream, there's basically three ways it can go for uh, mergers and acquisitions. <laughs> Is it stays the same, it gets better, or it gets worse the pixel logic people aren't dumb so i'm actually really excited i think it's going to be really really cool to see what comes up uh because zbrush is a really really their pixel logic is a small team so if this allows them to kind of do the things that are maybe a little more involved or a little more i don't know everything everybody's been asking for that's been like why don't they do this it might have been because they're a small team and they, they couldn't dedicate the resources to that but now Maybe they'll have a chance, man. I'm 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 totally psyched myself. Um, yeah, exactly. Cool. I'm doing good. Bertram, let me. Okay, so that was the link I meant to send out. That's the hard surface link. So we dive through that. That goes through a lot of really cool ZBrushy stuff. Different types of ZBrush stuff that you can use. Um, to get you on your way. Now, we were going to talk about, we had eyebrows, and there was one really easy one. Oh, yeah, the surface noise. So I'm going to go out of it in mode here. Control N. Actually, I might be able to just give you a, a link. So as per usual, on my YouTube channel here, if you go to the playlist section, you're going to see all my ZBrush 2022, what's new? ZBrush 2021 point, whatever, what's, or 2021, what's new? So in ZBrush 22, what's new? You're going to see there's a surface noise update, brush noise and pattern brushes here. Uh video I don't, I don't i didn't number these um but they're in there so check that video out but we'll talk about it too and then also on my art station what i usually do is give a call out for every uh, new update so here's or did i not yeah i did zbrush 2022 what's new so there's that so now we were talking about Surface noise. So we're gonna go in here, grab a cube 3D, edit, make poly mesh 3D. We talked about this on my on the uh, Tuesday's live stream as well, but we'll talk about this just really quickly. X on my keyboard, a uh, zero mesh or half, depth size down to zero, detect edges just to get nice even quads all over the place. Several ways to do that, but that's one. And then now we're going to say uncrease all. It's gonna be under your geometry crease menu, and we're gonna hit Control D a number of times here. And we'll switch back to startup material. So now, if I go through here and I do a geometry surface noise. Uh, nope, not geometry surface noise. Surface noise. And I just do like rock surface noise like this. Uh, it's fine because this is just going to be like a, it does a nice projection all over the place. We'll change the scale here. However, if I go in here to noise plug or bring in my own alpha, by click, you can click down here and bring in your own alpha. Um, ZBrush 2022, Z alphas. I know the cloth stuff tiles, um, so we'll just grab wool. So now alpha, and we're gonna go ahead and turn off mixed basic noise here and then alpha scale this down and crank that strength up just a little bit. So now uh, if we say okay, that's going to pro planar project it. So you're gonna see it gets really stretchy on the sides. That actually does a surprisingly good job considering because the, the angle I had the camera at. Uh, but you see there is stretching on the side. So if you want to avoid that, what you need to do is under edit mode, you have to go in here to uh, make sure you have UVs so that it can use UV projection instead of 3G, 3D planar projection. There's no like triplanar projection or box projection in ZBrush right now. Who knows what the future will bring? So in order to do that, luckily, 
I do have subdivision history. So I'm gonna go down here to my surface noise, turn that off. And we even have uh, poly, what are those called, poly groups? So we're gonna go down here to Z plug in and we're gonna say UV master and we're gonna say unwrap poly groups and you should work on a clone. Um, I can't flatten, but uh, it's there, I promise. If you go down here to texture map, create new from UV check, you can see these are the UVs I have now. So we'll go ahead and turn that texture off. So now when I go back up in my subdivision history and we turn back on our surface noise and we say edit and we go out of 3D to UV mode, now it's gonna use your UVs to uh, tile these. Let's grab another alpha. Or you know what? We don't even need to use that. We'll click off of there. We'll go into noise plug. We'll just grab a weave pattern. And we're going to say mix basic noise down to zero. And we're going to say plug in scale. There you go. So here's our weave pattern using, let's turn off relative, using our UVs as opposed to doing that stretchy planar projection. Um, all as well as so if we go so that's basic surface noise however you can also put if we go in here to bra bn there is a noise brush in here uh, and there's also a pattern brush i think pattern pattern two pattern one so if we go in here to pattern brush you're going to see i can let's turn off symmetry so i can i can start drawing over here and it it brushes with a pattern on and then if i go to the side here it's going to planar project however if I start brushing over here and let go and start brushing over here and then start brushing up here, it'll resample what direction it's going to project that noise from and allow you to uh, just brush that noise on. And that is found in, oh no. Surface noise, okay, good. Local projection mode, dynamic scale and base scale. So I'm gonna turn off dynamic. So dynamic scale is if you have a big, so if you go light and then heavy, it'll change the scale. And then local projection modes, what's allowing us to go from this side. So here, here it's off and it's like, oh, it looks great here. And then on this side, it's stretched. So this is where we can turn on local projection mode. Now it's great here and it's great here. And then with dynamic scale off, we can change that base scale. So now we can go in here and say like 0.5 and now it'll stay consistent no matter how hard I press. Um, and then, so this kind, this one kind of builds up because it's based on the standard brush. However, if we go in here to BP Brush Pattern 01, same thing. We'll turn off dynamic scale. So now, and we'll change this base scale down. This one is based on a single layer brush. So now, when I go through, let's hit Control D one more time. I can do here. Now, if I don't let up, it's going to stretch. But I can do local projection. And then I can do local projection, and then I can do local projection, and then in between, local projection. So that's brush-based surface noise. And again, that is all found in the ZBrush 2022 What's New. You can go up here and click on this one, video 11. Cool. Yeah, and it's uh, yeah, Zebra's is already prescri prescription subscription based. Um, I've had, but I've had a, I've had the perpetual license for twenty years. Twenty years. I was a junior in college, I think, when I got my ZBrush license, and I'm a hundred and fifty years old. I fought in the Civil War, um, and I've paid for ZBrush once. I mean, come on, give me a break. Um. Yes. <laughs> I love you. Uh, do, 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 do. Cool. All right. So now uh, we were, oh, yeah, eyebrows. So the cool thing about Photoshop is eyebrows are totally easy. You just basically do this. Done. Um, the basics of, you know, let's do this. Let's go into... So this is what we're looking at. And boy, it's just some fierce brows. I love it. Uh, I'm trying to get a good pattern to look at. There we go, there's some eyebrows. Boom. These are fun eyebrows. Oh, there's a good one. So basically in, kind of a sparse and in, and then these kind of start going this way and then they kind of meet at a point. 
Uh, there's probably better resources on this, but essentially, so like we were talking about, we have, oh, let's turn back on our sketchy mode. So we have a skull here. So here's the Loomis, here's a Loomis method we were talking about earlier. You can go in here and you can slice off uh, half of that and then drop this down. And then this kind of, this is kind of weird because this will come here, but you do need a little more space for your cranium, I think. So I'm going to pop out just a slight tad bit more. And then here's that cut in half, which I think is your more your brow line, because here to here is your entire head, and then this is where your eye line is. So this is where your eyes kind of sit. And then again, jaw, your mandible, where you masticate your food, is here. And then, so here's again that brow line. So this is what we're talking about. I forgot what this was called, like your key, key, keystone, or it's not that, but it's it's got a specific name, but I forget what it is. That's in between your eyes, and then your no nasal bone kind of pokes out, and then it kind of drops down here. So that's your cavity, and then your cartilage comes out this way. Uh, so in here, so there's that, and then this will kind of drop down to your inner canthus, and then this is your kind of sunglasses shape. And this is going to be, it's not necessarily square, but it kind of swoops here. And then this is where your eyeball, your eyeball kind of favors a little bit higher, and then this is where your eyelids go through and attach, like so. And then, oh, a pretty eyeball. And then here's where your brow kind of sits. So under, it kind of goes, you can feel it, underneath and then out above your brow. And then like I was saying before, on males, it's a little more pronounced. You're going to have this little wingy shape here. You know, I, I think I would remember this stuff. I think I have brain problems. Is that a, is that happening to anybody else or am I just getting old? So here's this. And then, okay, so this is where your, okay, see if I remember this. So here's where your cheekbone kind of comes out like this. And then this is going to swoop back up your zygomatic arch here. And then that's that little bony outcrop I was saying on the cranium there that your neck attaches to. And then inside of here, your TMJ, temporomandibular joint is there, I believe. And then this is your toothy cylinder here. So this is gonna kinda swoop down and around. And then there's your chin. And then there's the other side, it's cheekbone. And then there's your brow. And then there's the front of the head. So this is your skull here. So there's our teeth, um, something like that. And then this is your, um, what's that, temporal temporal line? And then in here, that's where your chewing muscles kind of fit and they tuck down and they attach here. And then your um, this muscle comes in and attaches the inside top, just that bottom inside of the zygomatic arch. And then this will kind of curve down and that's basically your skull shape. Anyway, from the front here, so here's our, this and then this. So here's this and this. Uh, basically what we're talking about is, this is that brow kind of scoops over here. And then the shape is kind of fuzzy. And then it goes, well, here's the, here's the volume I'm looking for. So it goes fuzzy and then it starts going like this. Kind of gets brushed along this way. And then it kind of goes up. And then these start coming in. So they kind of start swinging in here. And then this gets a little bit lighter on the bottom. So something like that is the pattern we're looking for, maybe. Let's make that a little more obvious. We'll turn this off and then we'll drop this down. So again, fuzzy. And then this direction kind of coming towards a point and then dropping in from the top and then getting lighter on the bottom, something like that. So that's what we're looking for. And then we need a head and my favorite is this one because it is just funny to me 
Oh, let's see if I remember how to do this stuff. So here's where your brow goes. And, you know, we can just do one side actually. We can copy it over. So we don't want surface noise anymore. We want what? What are we doing? We're doing fiber mesh. So preview. <laughs> uh, and also, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go down here to, I know where the mask is. I'm going to say mask, turn on view mask. So it doesn't bother me. So that's a little dense. So we're going to drop this max fibers way down. And we're going to, there, there's actually probably information. Chris Costa probably has information on like how many of these things you need. So you can probably go in and dial those in. Um, but I'm just going to eyeball it. Length doesn't need to be that long. And you know what I'm going to do? Let's save ourselves maybe a little bit of work. I'm going to tilt the head this way. And then I'm going to do a... Also, let's go ahead and turn off. Sorry, I'm getting a little bit dry. Um, twist down to zero. And then we're going to take uh, this gravity. And we, as, we, as we just touch the gra... Whoa. As we just touch the gravity here, h tangent down to zero, you're going to see it kind of pulls in that direction. And if we, when we start grooming this, I'm going to make some uh, changes, but that's basically, I don't know, that's basically it, right? So we're going to say, you know, let's go down here to base and turn this to white. And let's go ahead and do a tip and turn that to white. And again, let's take this and just do gravity here. Okay, so we have this. Now we just need to get that pattern. So I think you, you, we could do polygroups. I think we, we'll just do polygroups separate. So we're going to say, uh, okay, accept that. And now we have uh, these. Oh, and you can also, damn. Let's go back. I'm going to show you this too. We still have our mask on there. You just can't see it. So I'm going to do another preview here. Same settings. Only this time I'm going to give it actual width. So again, gravity. And then over here underneath segments, I'm going to say maybe maybe 10 or 11, and then the profile, I'm going to say 4. Uh, basically, what that's doing is making this actual round geometry, and the segments is more than 1, 2, 3, it's 10, so it actually gives, has a little bit more give, or a little bit more to play with, so we're going to say accept. So now we've got two versions, so we'll go ahead and say that's good. We'll go ahead and turn off that. Okay, so now uh, grooming. So now if I go in here to like brush groom hair toss and I start grooming, you're going to see it kind of wants to stick really far out from here. So I'm going to go in here to my brush fiber mesh and we're going to say front collision tolerance, drop that down to maybe 10. And now we can start going through here and moving these things around. Now I will say the groom brushes themselves kind of difficult to work with. Um, but you can kind of play around with this. And the other thing too is it's kind of hard to work on these things. You know, if you want these to go down and these to go up and these to go a different direction, you kind of want to isolate them. So this is where you can go in here with masking and you can just drag a mask over these and then hit control W and that'll go ahead and group those. You can also go through here with masking and just draw. You can just paint and it'll mask the entire fiber. So again, um, hit control W. And then you can say control shift, control shift drag, control W, and now all of those, oops. Let me see, let me get on this. Okay, yeah, that was just a, a thing. Okay, so now I can isolate these. Brush groom, I guess hair toss is okay just to kind of get it in the, whoa, boy, what is going on here? Get it in the general direction. No, don't go crazy. Room, yes. Isolate. Why does it want to go nuts? Preserve length. This is going to hell. This is going to move. Preserve length up to 100. Front collision tolerance down to 10. Is it doing something weird? Hmm. Inverse. Inverse groom. Okay. And then down here, and oh, you know why? Let's see, masking, is that doing something stupid? Yeah, I had something masked. I, I still had it masked. When I was making my polygroups, it was still masked. Whew. Okay, we're good, we're okay. User error, I just had mask um, stuff. So brush groom, 
hair toss again front collision tolerance down we'll isolate this and then you're gonna oh man is it still being weird that's really bizarre what am i doing wrong here oh maybe no that's not it just those ones everything else is fine that's fine so uh we have those and then basically we can also go in here to like pinch and you can use a pinch brush along with preserved length here so you can use this to kind of go through and kind of pinch things and you can even mask these bottom ones here control w isolate this and then you can literally just you just make sure you're on your move brush and stuff you have preserved length turned on and then you can go through here and you can kind of use the move brush to groom use the move brush to groom and then let me hold down shift and smooth this one out and I'm just gonna kind of there's also a brush groom let's say there's like something that'll give you a little bit of turbulence called groom to realant so you can use that kind of sparingly on kind of, I mean, even in this one, you can kind of go back through and kind of smooth these out. So back in the move. Um, another thing you can do, you can hit W or Q, uh, hold down control, and then you can like mask pin, and then you can do a quick hide point. That'll hide everything except for those. So if you don't necessarily want to polygroup something, but you do want to isolate just a few things, uh, and then again, you can go through here and you can clump these together with the clump brushes or you can just go in here and pinch. Uh, you can do that. So then, you know, that way you can kind of start just kind of laying out your, um, the direction of your, your fibers there. Oh, sorry for that. I don't know why that groom brush is going nuts. Cool. Um, press for um yes hey agent 47 <laughs> i wonder if i am john you um <laughs> yes trouble listening uh yep i think i have the same problem that might be different though i do about making a game ready fur i'm trying to make a viking cape at the moment but it looks like crap no matter what method i use uh yeah game ready f like if you want it to <laughs> Ooh. That would be like hair cards, or you can do like a limbic hair. That's a that's a tough one. The, the getting stuff to be performant in engine is tough. That's a tough one. I, I don't have a super good answer for that. I apologize. I wish I did. Um, let's see. We'll say delete all here, and I guess we're done with dice. Uh, what was another thing I maybe wanted to print? Let's go in here to load tools. So basically, also, if there's anything else that might be cool to 3D print, just let me know. Uh, here, pawn models, designs. Let's go in here to our station, my profile. This coin might be interesting to print out. So maybe, what was that? That was a recording of ZBrush 2022. Oh, let me never see source models coin. I don't think I need to 3D print the case, but just the coin should work here. So ZBrush 2022, that's fine. So now this is 3.8 million. So again, we're gonna wanna go in here to Z plugin and decimation master preprocess current. And again, if I'm going to print this out, I don't want to put supports on the front or back because I want... Oh, another thing, too, is you can polish those dice. I have some nice sandpaper for polishing, so... Not that I would want to do that for the Oogie Boogie dice, but just for real dice, you can do that, too. That was in that YouTube video I was talking about. Um, yeah, is it possible to become both Houdini and a ZBrush artist? Sure. I'm not, but if you want a little bit of Houdini stuff on my YouTube channel... There's Houdini Auto Game Res, so here. And there's there's another one. Houdini Game Dev Toolset here. And I, every, occasionally 
I'll do, there's other Houdini stuff in here, so if you can just take that. In. I think I went through here and like shattered a, a dog or pieces. <laughs> All for Houdini. Houdini. Let's go and have a little bit. Using Gozi. So, I don't know. There's some Houdini stuff in there. Obviously, yeah, of course you can. Yeah, why not? Yeah, UE5 groom hair stuff. That could work. Uh, yeah, for the Ninja Turtle, I'll do that. I'll see. Uh, that one I might have to go through and kind of split him up and get keys for his arms and stuff. Which I've never done before. I'm excited. That's some cool stuff to learn. I have a, I have a Google Doc full of things I need to watch about getting ready, setting up things for 3D print. So now we've pre-processed this. Again, we're going to decimate this down. Let's try 200 first. That seems more than plenty. Let's say 100. That's good enough. Yeah. Export onto my desktop here. Coin selected. Cool. Uh, this one, I don't need the second one, do I? Select all off. This one, delete. I'm going to go ahead and save this one. Uh, let me see. millimeter dice is fine and then you know I can probably just drop my coin right on here and I can use this as scale reference open coin ooh that's tiny so I'm gonna do this one again we're gonna say turn off select all coin Scale to fit, and then rotate. <laughs> there we go. 90 degrees. And then now uh, we'll scale this down just a bit. There you go. Nice big coin. Now this one, do I need to hollow either of these out? Because hollowing actually works pretty, pretty well. Um... On these so for example if I want to I can select just the die and then I go in here I don't okay yeah so we're gonna say hollow out we want to do 2.6 is the default that's fine we don't need to do any grid infill structure we want to do inner start let it do its thing and then now when we go through the objects here the there will be a hollow cavity inside here and it's not a really big dice so I don't think it'll be too too terrible and then uh, we can also put in drain holes and stuff like that too which we could do so if we want to we could say okay give me a hole and I can say keep the hole and the shape is a circle and Where is it? Perpendicular to model. Hmm. Oh, add a hole. And I need to make this a little bit smaller. Can I do like, no, oh yeah, 2.5. Perfect. Oof. Beautiful. And then I may need to make this a little bit depthier. Why would it need that much though? That seems weird. Boy, it just really doesn't want to go in. Oh, there it goes. Okay, that's really long. Hold on. Uh, for some reason that bottom one just really didn't want to go through. So here, and I can plug the hole back if I need to. And that was actually kind of poorly executed here. Let's see if we could do like 2.3. And then over here, 
There we go. Put some holes in there so I can rinse it out. Cool. So you can do that. Uh, bar relief in the alpha menu and the project bar relief in the tool menu. So one is going to create an alpha that you can then use as an alpha to stamp on something. And then one is going to literally project what you have. So um, here, GFS 2022, what's new? What we're talking about here is the Bevel Pro bar relief and project. In the so here's the specific video on that. But it's actually pretty, pretty useful. So if I go through here and I do... For example, um, yeah, yeah, circle 3D should be good. So, circle 3D, I'm going to go ahead and say make poly mesh 3D, hit control D to subdivide, go in here to delete lower, go in here with my Z modeler brush, Q mesh, poly group all, and pull this out. And then, if we want to put a little edge in here, we can just grab these. So, now I'm going to say auto groups here and we have a, a coin and I'm going to say crease PG control D control D control D and then uncrease all and then control D control D so now we have a coin here and if I have an object which can be anything so for example um, that was a stream we did turtle power bring this in and I don't even remember where that is actually hold on oh yeah alpha <laughs> uh, go out of solo mode here so you we can get rid of and you we can get rid of and you we can get rid of so we have our <clears throat> our guy here so if we go in here to alpha this is going to capture an alpha of what we have and then if we go in here and we say okay give us a bar relief of this that will give us that um, another thing you can do is you can go in here so you know your mrgb z grabber so if we drop our objects on the canvas by going out of edit mode and then we go in here to mrgb z grabber and then you use this to kind of grab what you want you can take this depth information and say um, apply bar relief and that'll go ahead and turn that Z depth grab into a relief and that's going to give you an alpha like I said so now if we go back to our circle 3d here uh, nope this one here and we say W go back on Y control tap this polygroup here just to kind of isolate just the center section and then we go in here to I guess you know what we'll keep our we'll take our standard brush and we'll clone it <clears throat> drag rect z add and then we can say load up our one of these reliefs if we can focal shift down to negative 100 and then we can drag this in um was there there's something else so there's that and then, oh yeah, so if you want to do a mask, so let's say you hold down control and bring this in and then you want to drag out, oops, drag right here. So you can drag out this alpha here with a mask. However, it's a little bit hard to place. So in this case, let's hit W and then, oops, W and then a Y to go into transpose mode and then hold down uh, control. And then as you drag out the transpose line, you can kind of scales that although he's kind of looking a little chunky I wonder if we have to grab a square one here you know what I want to say no probably let's take this alpha and we're gonna rotate it so now we can more precisely place this on here there we go and then now if I hold down control shift and isolate this and invert it and then control tap oops there we go we can mask everything else off 
No, that's not what we wanted to do. We want to keep, let me do some juggling in my head here. We have this, I want to invert this mask and then I want to take this and I want to mask all this out. So now this is just the only unmasked part. And now we can go through here and we can do our deformation um, inflate. And we can kind of inflate on through. And then if we like that, we can actually go down here to adjust last and we can use this. You don't have to even put it on a layer. Go through here and adjust last and kind of dial that in. Yay. Now the other thing too is instead of using, if that's kind of a pain, you can instead take this and go to subtool append that coin. And then now we can just take this coin, hit Y and position it back behind the object where you want to capture the object here. Um, or if you want it more from the side, let's go in here to move multiple. And I'm going to say control shift drag, control shift drag over all of him. And then we're going to say you I want it more of like this, this kind of view in front of the coin. He's looking this way, like, Teddy Roosevelt, and then we're going to take this coin here and kind of position it back. So now if we go down here under subtool and we say project bar relief, uh, that's going to take whatever you have selected and whatever else is in your scene and project it back. So you don't have to worry about like capturing an alpha and dragging it out. It is what you see is what you get. So now you can say project it and then I'll go ahead and project it straight back. Of course, that's going to project it on everything. So if we need to mask this first and then project, and that'll project what's on the screen back. And all these settings do stuff too. So that that link I sent out, or did I send it out? ZBrush 2022, what's new? Check that out. That'll give you a little bit more information on the little settings. Um, Cool. Uh, the three of the printer I'm using is uh, Elgu Mars 2 Pro, and then I've got another one here. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but I'll have videos on all of them. You know me. Uh, in fact, I can give you a little sneak preview. Let me see. Recording Elgu. Hey, everybody, it's Michael Pavlovich here. Blah, blah, blah. That's me. Uh, what I'm really looking for, though, is, ah, oh, there it is. Oh, it's square. I forgot. So here's basically um, me going through and just trying this thing out. I've never 3D printed before. It was pretty fun. It's pretty easy updating the firmware after the initial print, going in here and using Chichu Box and setting up supports and cutting in holes and all that stuff I cover uh, in the video again i think that'll be ready monday and then a little wash and cure scrape them off snap them out of the things and that's about it go through and redump your stuff so pretty cool pretty neat pretty easy at least so far so it's been cool um let's see this one to keep these size of positions like import export go z uh, confused about flip V for textures, uh, some things. Yeah, I've, I've heard the exact same thing for 20 years. Uh, uh, yes, so Mars 2 Pro, Mars 2 Pro, <laughs> mono. Um, start on 3D, outsource company was the most important thing to stand out. Oh man. Um, Find out what, what your people are good at. And then have a, honestly, it's just like anything else for 3D art, especially if you're just doing asset creation as a portfolio, I'd assume. That's a tough one. I'm not, I'm not yeah, a good portfolio. And it, it, your portfolio would be tailored to what the companies want. So you obviously, if you're doing hyper real face stuff, you want to make sure that you're, I don't know, you have that available and you're able to do it. Uh, or the opposite stylized stuff too. Um, synced up files and everything. Yes. Uh, yeah. ZBrush scales up with GoZ. Oh, GoZ I never use. I just export. <laughs> um, wish I could. Yeah, GoZ I, I, I don't usually use. I use it for like Houdini just to throw stuff into Houdini quickly, but that's usually not scale sensitive. 
Uh, I'm doing good, Lucas. Um, swap between mass types and select types by a shortcut. Uh, kind of. So if you hold down control, you're in mask. And if you hold down control shift, you're in select rectangle. However, <clears throat> if you're ever masking something, you're like, oh, I want to go back to select rectangle. Just tap control one more time. Oh, that's cool. And you can select. <laughs> Have I ever done that before? Hold on. Control shift is select rectangle. Control is mask. So if we're in control shift and we're selecting and you can just tap control, it's not going to do anything. But if you're ever masking and you want to switch back to control shift and select, you can. And I can actually use a um, selection mask. I didn't know I could do that. Huh. That's a weird feature. Uh, the other thing too is like if you're going in here and you're slicing stuff. So let's go back to a cylinder, make poly mesh 3D. Basically anything in here besides selection. So if you're in here, like I said, using slice curve and you're like, okay, I'm slicing oops, here and I'm slicing here and I'm slicing here and everything feels great. And I want to go through and I want to select one of these or so do a selection. If I do control shift, obviously I have slice. However, you can tap control. It'll go back into control shift. I don't think you can do like hop back into control shift and like select a poly group, but you can do select a little piece of that poly group and then control shift Q and that'll visibility grow to your poly group border. Is that useful? I don't know. Best resin is any cubic. I'll check that out. I've got some resin it's types. Cool. Awesome. Glad the uh, R station course worked out. There's a lot of information on there. There is the uh, to speak to that. If you look, click on the nerdy guy here, there's if you have access to R station learning, there's a ton of videos. I think there's like 12 hours of ZBrush stuff in there where you can make him, me, younger. Cool. Uh, what's the best way to practice characters proper anatomy? So that's, you know what, let's talk about that because we were doing that earlier. Uh, but I'm not even certain like how accurate I really was, right? Like his head looks a little small and his muscles. Um, so we kind of went in and did a little bit of ink, ink drawing here, but it's always good to kind of test, especially when you're getting into hard, difficult stuff, uh, to go and check your math. So for example, if I want to go through here and draw a skull, so one, one way I think is really fun. You know, let's do this control N. 85660. I just like working a smaller resolution. Go back into sketchy mode. So if you want to check your work, hold on, caps lock was on. If you want to check your work on what you're doing, you can have a 3D model. And I think that's because like a lot of people will be like, oh, I can give you a critique and tell you what's wrong with it. But if you have, if you're just learning the technical aspects, it's really, really useful um, to be able to go in and just have something like a 3D scan or a 3D model to make sure that, you know, you're putting things in the right place and you start getting a feel for um, where things need to go. So for example, um, let me draw a really poor skull here. God, I don't even remember. Okay, let's do a, let's do orthographic use first. So we've got the cranium here and then here's the jaw. And then here is the auditory meatus. And then just above that is your cheekbone. And that's going to kind of come up and then your eyeball is in here then your brow ridge here your temporal line here 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 and then this goes out and down and then this is the toothy thing and then that's your chin so from the front view here it's going to be a little little thinner um so here's the kind of sawed off chopped off cranium and then here's the the jawline, I think, is actually probably lower, but we'll, we'll give it a little bit of a cart, a little more anime look. Um, so here we've got this jaw here, and then uh, the eye line is through the middle. So that's going to be here. Here's your big. So it's kind of square, except for that inner side where on the nose side, it's going to kind of scoop out a little bit. And then you've got your. God, I can't believe I can't remember what that's called. And I think I freeze up. I, I go like, oh, I can't remember what that's called. And then it it just completely escapes. And then my brain doesn't even want to think anymore. So here's the cheekbones again coming down this way. And then here's your teeth. 
your tooth cylinder, and then here's your jaw down through here, and then your temporal. So here's the zygomatic swinging back around, and then your temporal here. So there's our skull. Now drawing this in three quarters, uh, we kind of did a little bit of a Loomis thing here, but same same deal. Um, I'm going to take the eraser and just kind of, ah, oh, damn, every time. Hold on. Uh, control copy, control paste, default X, Alt E L, control D select here. Okay, so now we're drawing on a layer. So uh, we're going to go through here and just kind of translate this information to a skull shape. So we've got this cranium and then we've got the face hanging off the cranium. This line is actually going to throw me off, so I'm going to get rid of that. So here's the front of the cranium and actually it's going to come down and then your two cylinder and then your chin. So this is going to keep me a little bit more honest. And then your eye line again is about halfway down the skull here. So you see here's head and the head and then halfway down is that eye line. So again, top, bottom, eye line through here. So this is more of the brown line. And then this is where your eyes are going to go and then your your cheekbones are going to wrap around here and then that your zygomatic is going to pick up. And then this is where the jaw meets the cranium. That's where your auditory meatus is. Your ear hole. And then this is going to come up. It's actually going to come, if I remember correctly, up and then in a little bit and then your temporal line. And then this is that kind of heavy masculine brow ridge. This is going to come back and then back out here. And then this is going to swoop back down in here. And then this is going to, the cylinder here, and then the jaw. And the whole the whole point of doing this is so that I can test my, I can check my work, right? The cheekbone's going to wrap around here. And then this is going to come around. And again, our eyes fits in here somewhere. Something like this. Now let's clean this up just a little bit because I was hesitant. I'm going to drop that opacity down, put another layer. You know, let's go ahead and scale up this we'll take take advantage of the resolution we have in here so if I go through here now and again so now we can be a little bit more confident so we have our uh, brow here and this is gonna circle around here and then again we've got this nasal bone and then this is our cheekbone thank you and then here's our teeth and our chin here's the midline and then here's this is going to kind of give you give you a little tail here and then this little sunglasses and swoop here you got your eyeballs in there and then this is going to come down and there's the cheekbone so this is going to swoop and then there's the this kind of curves here and then there's this Oof. okay and then it does some funky stuff here and then you've got your big bony thing for your neck muscles to come into and then here's your cranium. We'll box this out just a little bit. Swoop down, up, in, temporal line, teeth, jaw, TMJ, something like this. So now let's check our math. Back in ZBrush. We have 3D, so let's take advantage of it. I'm going to go to your load tool. Uh, where would this be at? Sorry, give me a second. It's been a while. Um, um, where are you at, man? There he is. Um, skull simplified. So this was from, again, my Scott Eaton class. I took, I'm going to go in here. Actually, let's do this. I'll go in here to render properties transparent because on this here on let's switch this out to skin shader four we'll turn off line under polyframes we just have this and we'll turn on perspective uh, so down here under display properties bpr settings you can have bpr transparent shading turned on on individual subtools when i render this it'll render transparent so now i'm going to do see through oh you can't see it it's just above next to your quick save there's a see through so i can drop this down and now i can go through here and i can check my math so this is on a skull, but you can do this with entire bodies or perspective or foreshortening and change all sorts of stuff. So if you if you want to get, and we've here's another thing too I should probably mention, we've done this a bunch. 
So if you go through here in my thing and you just say, anatomy, there you go, I'll copy this in here. Tons of videos where we've talked about, some of them are pretty old, but we go with like Dicom viewers are in here and all sorts of cool fun stuff in 3D, but we'll do that in a second. So anyway, so we have this lined up and I can even, I could be cute and I can do like a BPR render. Um, Cool, so it's in the right position. It's going to take see-through down to zero. Windows Shift S, it just gives you a real quick screenshot, screen capture here, and then just Control V, you can paste that right in there. So now, if you need to like drop the opacity down, and again, just kind of check where your stuff lined up, you know, you, you have tools available to you. Now, another thing we did in one of our previous live streams, and it's on my ArtStation page too, I think it's a little bit easier to find, yeah, this one, mannequinization. So if you want to, to go through this process and just kind of make some cool mannequins out of stuff or really quickly, and we would talk about this in the live stream as well. Oops. There are mannequins in here. So if you go in here to project mannequin, there's eight head high mannequins in here. Um, you know what, I don't wanna lose anything. So I'm gonna go load tools from project, ZBrush 2022 Z projects. Mannequin, um, eight head man, I think is fine. There we go. So now if I want to draw something and he's in a, he's in a pose or, you know, I can take a turn this off and it's like, there's our eight heads guy. Or if I want to do something really foreshortened or really difficult, let's go in here to R to rotate. Let's turn off X symmetry. And I want to be like, he's going to be kind of like hunched forward and his hips are going, uh, let me see if I can, there we go. Hips are going this way and maybe kind of twisting. Um, so he's twisting this way, so we'll twist his legs this way and maybe put this leg. Yeah, so I'm, again, I'm, all I'm doing is rotating. I'm not moving scaling or, ro or anything like that. So go through here and we'll do, boy, he is just busted. Um, He's reaching back and he's like, follow me. Come with me if you want to live. Uh, or he's like a Tron guy, right? So we'll do this. So here and here and here. So uh, if you want like severe, like crazy foreshortening, we can go in here to draw and we can say change the focal length. So if you, the more you... Um, crank it down the more orthographic it is. Oh, you need to have perspective turned on. Um, sorry, the more you crank it down, the more crazy it is, and the higher you crank it up, the more orthographic it is. So if you want to do like a really extreme focal length, and then also like crazy foreshortening, you can just kind of capture this. And again, Windows Shift S, you can, you can texture, grab dock, export, all that stuff, but here, opacity down. And then now, um, I mean, this is more for like foreshortening and posing and stuff, but at least you got the information here that you might need. So like, here's where the neck comes in, here's where this comes up, and then it's gonna kinda be a huge head here. And then here's the rib cage, and then here's the pelvis. So this isn't a ton of information. We're gonna get into that in just a second, but like, here's that twist through here the body and then and as far as anatomy goes this is where it's like okay here's the adductors and um <clears throat> oh you know what we do have our i don't have an updated thing on my bookshelf but there is a bookshelf i can give you it's got some anatomy books on it um i'm really in love with these lazen taco <laughs> books i got they're korean they're really cool um but they're not on there Let me see. Copy link. Or sorry, get link. Copy link done. There we go. I should keep these on like. Um, yeah, there's a bunch in here. I need to update these, but um, there's some anatomy stuff in there. But anyway, uh, again, and they, we were just talking about volumes too. So like, if you want to go through here and just 
put in the volumes where you need to and worry about the anatomy later, you can. Or if you want a little bit more anatomical information, or if you want to try drawing first and then pose into that drawing, um, like we did, so we can take this one here and say, okay, here, here's our drawing. So let me go grab one of our mannequinizations if I can find one. Um, that would have been streaming. Mannequin, female, male, lean. Yeah, let's do male, lean. There we go. So now, uh, drop our C through just a bit here. And he's, he's actually got a pretty standard um, side pose. I don't know that he's, he's just kind of standing there. I guess his head is a little bit more tilted. So we're going to say Control Shift or Alt Tap the head, W, uh, go to Unmesh Mesh Center and turn off X Symmetry. And we'll just kind of rotate the head. You could go into um, two ways you can do that. I guess I'll show you both. So here's the head. And then for the arm here, we're going to hit W. Move this down. We're going to go into Move Multiple. Control Shift Drag over just the arm parts here. Alt Tap. Oh, uh, we need X. Damn. Hold on. Alpha off. This isn't really set up for posing, is it? Okay, here's what we're going to do. Let's set this up for posing real quick. See through, off. So it'd be easier if these were separate. So I'm going to say auto groups. Split hidden, alt tap, uh, or we can just turn off X symmetry, control shift, A, uh oh. Oh, come on. I guess control shift A is a chit you box, something or other. Close, no. Give it a minute. Get a drink. Ooh, coffee. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Grab a little piece. Control Shift A. That's different than Control Shift Q, which is Grow Polygroup. Um, here, 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 here. Control Shift X off. Control Shift A. Split hidden. X off. Control Shift A. Split hidden. And so now uh, these are all. Oh, and he did have uh, clenched hands, so I'm going to go ahead and just turn these hands off. So now, um, like we were doing before, we can go here to see through. And when, there's two ways to pose this in ZBrush. Maybe eh, there's multiple ways to pose this in ZBrush, but basically um, I can turn this entire body just to kind of go, okay, move multiple, make sure everything is uh, selectable. I'm going to go here to unmesh mesh and yeah, select the center thing. Unmesh mesh center, X turned off. There we go. And I'm just going to rotate his entire body to match. So there we go. His, rot his body's rotated and he's in here. And then now we want to move his arms. So we're going to move multiple, control shift, drag over his arms, W, alt tap in his, I guess we can just position this into his uh, thing there. And then we're going to rotate this down a little bit here. So now we're getting, it's kind of like that Spider-Man posable mannequin uh, where it's got all the musculature on there. So we can just go through there. Now we can grab both of, we can control shift alt drag over this one, move this pivot point into place here. And then we can just kind of rotate this down. So I didn't realize I drew such a boring ass pose. And then here, uh, so this is going to be rotated back. And if this is, if you got an idea of where the arm is, you can go again, just go, go out of see through and, you know, do what you need to do. But, or you can pose it first and draw later. Or you can draw first and match your pose and then fix your drawing, kind of like what we're doing now. So here, and then control shift alt, and then we'll go bend to the elbow. You can also use transpose lines for this. Just hit Y with gizmo selected. Um, but Gizmo seems to be working fine here. So we're going to rotate this up here. And then one more. Here. Now, 
let's go out of see through just so we can kind of give ourselves some once over. Maybe we want to grab all these and be like, eh, let me give myself a little bit more wiggle room in there. Okay, so here's our basic setup. Uh, let's take this one. And you can also go out and move multiple and just alt tap as well. So you don't have to be in move multiple. You can go through here individually and move around your individual subtools. So also another thing you can do is you can go into transpose master. So all of these are separate subtools right now. Again, so you can go through here and individually kind of do what you need to do. However, you can also go in here to Z plugin, transpose master and say T pose mesh. You can bring in a rig. I wouldn't necessarily do it with this, but you can try. Uh, transpose master T pose mesh. That's going to go through all your sub tools, merge them into one object with separate polygroups for each one. And then now if you wanted to say control shift drag, or you can control shift select, um, or you can control tap if you want to just mask one thing. Um, or you can go in here to control shift tap uh, here, Q, sorry, control shift tap and then invert that and then grab these and mask and invert. Or you can go in here, control shift drag, control shift A, mask and invert, just control tap on your canvas and mask and invert. And so you can grab, you can work on multiple things at a time. So if I wanted to, you know, kick this leg out, for example, I don't have to go through multiple sub tools or move multiple, just grab these and then take them and say, you kick out. And then when I go to T pose mesh to sub T, that'll go back to my sub tools. And you can actually put that movement on the layer if you wanted to, and it'll move them all out. Or like I said, you can move multiple, grab the ones you want to move, set the pivot and just, oops. So now we have our guy, we're going to go out of move multiple. We're going to crank up our C through here. And now we're going to check our work. So as we can see, you know, this head, little, little small on my guy, he's very heroic proportions. Um, arms are a little too long maybe, but that's okay. Oh, another thing too is you can turn on perspective. So this is actually way more interesting. So it's like I can drop my camera down or up, make him look like really heroic as opposed to just orthographic straight on like I have. So let's do that. Let's be like, you know what, this is going to be way cooler and maybe I want to change the silhouette a little bit have them looking off into the distance beautiful so now I can check my proportions I can check my math I can check my musculature and the landmarks and stuff like that or I can use this so let's cheat a little bit let's go out of see-through let's turn off polyframe let's hit Q let's turn, hit BPR this actually kind of hurts like, I mean, it's okay if you want to also add lighting in here, but I would maybe tone this down a little bit. So I'm going to go back to setup much startup material, which for me is matcap gray for use matcap gray. Uh, the light will change. I'm going to go in here to render property, render shadows. I'm going to take that global strength down to maybe 0.5, crank the angle up a little bit. And then there we go. So if we want the light, you know, let's do this. Let's say light tap once. This is also difficult. Let's go in here to basic material so I can see where the light is on my object here. There you go. So if you wanted like really intense lights and you wanted to see where all your stuff kind of popped out, you can. Another thing you can try to do is display properties, BPR settings. I want to say there's a smooth Hmm. I wanted to say there was a way to kind of smooth your faceting in ZBrush. There is a way to do it. I just forgot what it is. Is it under render? Smooth normals. Activate smooth normals render mode. BPR. Oh, there it is. BPR smooth normals. There we go. So with that activated, and again, that's under your smooth normals here, that'll kind of smooth out that faceting. So, and now you're getting kind of mid-tones and stuff too. Um, anyway, so if you have difficult lighting situations, you can definitely use that to your advantage. Um, in this instance, you know what, we'll just go high noon. There we go. I think that, that that'll be enough information. And then Windows Shift S, or you know, I'll stop doing that. We'll go in here to texture, grab dock. Oh, there it is. Uh, grab. Shaded dock. 
sorry, I'm not used to that. Uh, export, I'm gonna change it from JPEG just down here to PSD, so I don't have to go through another menu. We're gonna drop that onto our desktop here. And then now we'll hop back in here, file, open here, desktop. There we go. So now we have this, then we'll click and we'll make a new layer. Go ahead and fill this DX, all the L, fill that with white, drop this opacity down. Here's another cool thing. So in here, you can go in here to select subject. It'll analyze your scene and I'll just grab your subject. So we'll say copy, paste, there we go. So now we can drop the opacity on here and then everything we've done up to this point, we can continue to do brush here. How are we doing? Okay, yeah. So now you have all your landmarks on here and so now you got so much cool information. So here you can see that scoop of the eyeball and then, or the, the what's it called? The orbit in here. And then there's that nasal cavity through here. And then there's your midline of your face and then your two cylinder. And then here's your chin and you've already got the perspective kind of built in. So here's your jaw. And then here's where the zygomatic wraps around. Here's the corner here something like this and then this goes up and in there's the temporal line here and then here's our center line of the head there's that damn thing that i can't remember and then yeah there's the two cylinder so now if we drop this out you already got a cool skull going and you but you know i mean you know, you know now that you have the information you have you don't necessarily need it so now you can go in here and you can literally just be like okay the the eye is going to wrap around this way, and then the nose. Um, again, we'll, we'll go back to our big Roman nose here. We know where the we, we know where the landmarks are, so we can just make slight adjustments uh, where we need to. And then the eyebrows, we're going to come in here and then swoop back around. So we talked about that a little bit earlier today. And then here's the corners of the mouth are going to be a little darker here, here, and then. Uh, we got to give them giant Magnum PI mustache. Perfect. And then this goes around here, and then we'll kind of we'll just cut it, just cut his face up a little bit here, and then here's the neck, hyoid bone, and there we go. So there's where that connects, and then there's your sternum again and it, where, where you get separation and where stuff needs to so for example if your arms bent inwards your biceps gonna peak there's gonna be a there's gonna be a gap in here so you need to you can kind of just dial that in a little bit as opposed to you know necessarily modeling that you know it's there and then there's that this wrist transitions a little bit awkward so maybe that fist is a little bit far out so you can you can adjust that too you can be like you know what you need to come back a little bit here and if you want to, this is a lean model, although he's pretty big. Um, if you wanted to go crazy or if you want to make him more lean, you can do that too. So here's that chromium process bump we were talking about. And then your clavicle go around here and there's your, so this deltoid doesn't connect, but you can connect it. So it's going to connect on here. And then you've got that, here's where the chest comes into play, your chest line here and then your biceps in front and then here's the brachioradialis we we i struggled with that one <laughs> earlier and then your extensors on the back of the hand going up the back of the fingers here you know we can adjust this too we'll make this a little bit more put this finger out something like that and then here straight down corner Here's where the, the lats are going to kind of tuck up into that armpit as well. And then your rectus abdominis. And there's your acis, anterior superior iliac spine. And then here's your external oblique. And then again, right through here is where you're going to have that um, serratus anterior. And then your 
obliques tuck right in there and then right along the rectus abdominis here and then these are uh, you know here's your shelf you know that big old superman thing um but underneath here is where you're you'll have some abs here and you might have a little weird thing happening in here uh, maybe some very small ab things going on up here but then these are your your big abs and then this is going to be you know slanted and then straighter and then straight and then like we said before on the male it's going to kind of do this and on the female it'll be a little more violin-y generally speaking of course i i'm a little more like that and then here this is going to step down and then now we get into leg muscles and you can kind of see here too you know here's the rectus femoris and then here you can see this is going to cut across and then here's your vastus medialis and then here's your sartorius we were talking about earlier your adductors and then your tensor and then your vastus lateralis and again that's going to you get your tibia and your fibula over here and then here's your kneecap and little tibia bump and little fat under here and then this is going to be some tendons so here's that sweep of that tibia and again, it's high, low, high, low, opposite. So here's higher on the inside, lower on the outside. And then here's your gastronemius. And then your, what's that called? Tibialis anterior maybe kind of sweeps over just a little bit. Foot. And then again, adductors, medialis, knee, tibia swoop you're gonna see bone right through here and then there's your tibialis anterior giving it a nice curve i think that's what that is i could be wrong and then this is gonna sartorius and your gracilis and all sorts of stuff through here and then this is gonna ankle foot look at that cool cool and then if we get rid of this we have our Freddie Mercury hero. <laughs> but it's all there, and it's all information that you have, and you can check your work, and uh, all sorts of fun, fun stuff. All right? Was that fun, or was that boring as hell? Sorry, everybody. I don't know. This may not have been a great live stream, but I didn't really have anything planned. You know how it is. Oh, let me go get those books. Hold on. And actually, I can send you a Twitter link, too, that might have the... Yeah, did I put it? Maybe I did. See. I think I did. It wasn't that long ago. There we go. Um, so here's my tweet. And then here is the books. <laughs> L-E-Z-H-I-N. Uh, there's a huge one that's like secret character drawing that has a ton of cool stuff in it. And then there's uh, the, the character, just kind of part one and part two of the character drawing stuff. So I can kind of show you. Really, really, I'm in love with these books. They're really, really fun. Um, how can I do this? Ah! So here's this one and it's actually two books and the first one is body and the second one is head and then here's the secret character drawing one and this one is like 700 pages of just cool ways to think about how to construct things and cloth and creatures and bodies and all sorts of stuff so i don't know i i got a kick out of it of course i had to translate so that's what that that thing was so I use my OCR um, CZUR I have a CZUR scanner that I went through and scanned Korean it it recognized it as Korean uh, and then I was able to go through Google Translate and translate it and I did a pretty decent job ah. 
So before I leave, is there any last things here? Let me go through here. Um, can you save a viewport camera angle in ZBrush? Yes, you can go in here to document Zaplink properties and you can save them here. You can go into movie timeline show and you can click up here and you can save out timelines of, so if I go through here and, and then, oops, was I in the wrong thing here? So here's a camera angle, here's a camera angle and I can switch between camera angles here. Of course, the most obvious way is under draw, uh, there's camera. So you can store your cameras and you can save your cameras in here. So do that. Maxilla, is that what it is? Upper part is nasal bone, lower part is maxilla. Yeah, it's, it's the, this thing right here. <laughs> Um, where, 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 how does it work with 3D printing? The final product similar to non perspective objects. You had to specific number of perspective settings to make it look like final print. Um, good question. And basically, if I was going to 3D print this guy uh, to, to make sure it looks correct, you, you do want to turn on perspective. Just make sure you don't turn on perspective and then go into the, your object like this. Because if, you're, if your character is, um, let me see where my draw settings are. Say three five. There we go. So if your there we go. So if your uh, focal focal length is set to something like thirty five millimeters, and it's going to be a five inch tall character, well, you're going to see the five inch tall character on your desk, you know, at arm's length, and it's going to be this big. You know what I mean? Uh, but if you're evaluating your object and you're working on it, probably you're going to be in here like this. You know, you're going to be kind of looking at it like this. So if you look at your character and you're like, oh, is this going to look right? Well, remember to look at it in context from where you're going to see it in real life and not in context of just a floating thing in a 3D abyss, you know. Um, and that's why when I'm working, I'll usually just have perspective turned off. And then if I need to check, like, okay, how is this really going to look? We'll turn it back on and put it in context. And then you could even throw this in a key shot and put it on your desk if you wanted to and get really in context. But uh, Do you have a cinematic team? In certain affinity, if so, what is required of, for artists in that position? I we, we're, we have a cinematic thing happening, but it's not up and running just yet, so I can't give you specifics, any specifics on that, but keep your eyes peeled. I'll shout that out as soon as I have more information on that. We kind of did a fun thing. This is old, so this isn't our cinematic team. This is just something we did a long time ago. Uh, just miscellaneous people at certain affinity, sorry. This one. So if you go to the ZBrush Summit presentation here, we talk quite a bit about I mean, I talked about uh, like my ZBrush process for certain types of things like weapons and mechs and stuff like that and animation and fun. Uh, but there's also, oh, this is a tutorial series. So everything I did in my presentation, I went through and did a tutorial series on it, live stream. And then here is something we threw together at Certain Affinity. Just a handful of people uh, kind of put together something. This is Unreal 4. So big mech effects guys and really really animators had a lot of fun with that i mean they did i uh i was at zebra summit cool uh lazen l-e-z-h-i-n publisher of taco art books yes thank you robert uh can you do smooth normals without bpr i don't think so that's a that's another good one um but i think you do have to hit bpr for it to show up smooth like that yeah, Tom Selleck. <laughs> uh, bevel flat, sure. Uh, it, you know, and if you ever on my YouTube channel, oops, I hate YouTube when it does that. In here, just just for everybody, but here's bevel arc and bevel flat brushes right here. Um, so this is part of the ZBrush 2021 What's New playlist, which is a monster playlist. So if you go in here and say here uh zebras 2021 what's new you've got like 106 videos and bevel flat is in there uh, but it's pretty it's pretty simple so basically we'll go through here it'll make polymesh cube edit make polymesh 3d control d 
Oops. Let's go in here to turn our smooth modifier off underneath geometry here. Control D, and we'll switch this back to skin shader four here. So we've subdivided this up. So if we do B, B, F is bevel flat. And then basically you just pick, make, make your brush size pretty big. Uh, so you don't have to, you know, keep scrubbing back and forth a bunch, but you basically just pick one side, pick another, and then whoosh, bevel it back. And all it's doing is pushing that geometry back. Similar to as you were to go here and do the old clip curve. It just pushes that geometry back. Same thing on here. Um, and then of course, BBA is bevel arc, and that's where you can go from one side to the other, and then you can bevel across. And this is for like high res model beveling. And then if you want a mask, um, you can go this way, BBF, U to U. You can get some pretty cool stuff going, eh? Eh? Cool, thank you, Robert. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel more with that Toolbag 4 is an interesting upgrade when you already have Toolbag 3, Substance Painter, Designer, Quixel Mixer. Toolbag 4 is a uh, must-have upgrade, I think, um, for two reasons. Number one, the renderer, if you want to see, for instance, this was all rendered in Toolbag 4 here. Turn this music on, man. Let's hear it. And you probably can't see all of it because it's only capturing a little bit, but um, yeah, this is all rendered in Toolbag uh, 4, and it's got the ray tracing and all that good stuff, so that's cool. And then also, if you go down here to this no, de no look dev, so this is an interesting thing where you can go through and just capture things to a plane. You can actually texture in Marmoset. So you can text, I do, I do both. I do texturing and substance painter and then also texturing in uh, Marmoset as well. So you can do texturing. So I think it's totally worth it. I do sleep, not this morning though. I woke up early, but um, you know, this is, this is videos collected over years. So I don't, it's not real. I, I live stream once, twice a month, so. I, uh, one day I'll, I'll be able to sit down and do more videos. It's been a while since I've actually did, did, uh, done any series. Uh, Quixel Mixer is pretty neat. Wouldn't say it's on part of substance. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of, if you, I'm not really comfortable in it, so I don't want to shout out my opinions too hard. So I, I'm, I've, I've done substance painter for like a million years and, and, uh, Quixel, Quixel Mixer, not that much. And then also Marmoset, not that much. So, um, your mileage may vary, but cool. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Have fun with it. Have fun with the ZBrush. Have fun with 3D and then have fun with drawing, too. You know, make your make your little Freddie Mercury drawings um, the best they can be. It's fun. It's fun to go back and forth and also to check your work and learn anatomy. And, uh, it's you know, I'm trying to remember. There's more stuff, too, in here if I just go into load on my recordings when i'm doing anatomy stuff when i was taking my the scott eaton class i would go into zbrush and he has a zbrush class i need to take that and i would do you know i take like the king's line anatomy model that oh, here's another thing too so you hit comma key <clears throat> under project no nope, under tool you do have an entire anatomy model right in here and so i took this and i read z remesh and sub and uh, went through and just subdivided and tweaked tweaked the placement a little bit and then went through and labeled everything as we went through it so I could use this as a guide and a, as a reference, as a checker. So if I needed to go like, hey, match this marble statue's leg, I could go through here and be like, okay, I can put this generally in the position of the leg and I'd be like, okay, that is the tibialis anterior. Okay, I was right. And then let me go check my, hold on. I, I just, I'm dying to know. I'm gonna check all my damn anatomy. So extensors, brachial radialis. Next to that is your extensor carpi radialis longus, extensor carpi radialis brevis. Those all go to the thumb. Wrapped around those are your adductor pollis longus, pollicis longus, extensor pollicis brevis, and then brevis. And then there's your extensors, extensor digitorium. Go down the hands. And then these two little dudes, extensor digit 
Digity Mini Me. There's that little one, and then Extensor Carpi Ulnaris, and that's the one that kind of swoops over that ulna. And then there's Anconius here, which looks like your ulna. Let's see, it's so low. That looks like it attaches to the humerus, the lateral epicondyle of the humerus, and then down the ridge of your ulna there and then your flexors down there and then your flexors and your extensors so here's that bony thing that you're to your wrist and then these are going to kind of dip over those and your flexors i don't know any of them flexor carpi ulnaris pulmaris longus flexor carpi radialis pronator teres and then your bicep little swoop short head long head brachialis triceps all three heads Three heads, triceps, get it? The brachialis comes all the way through here. You see big flat fat muscle here. All the way across corachial brachialis from your, your uh, I think, coracoid process and the inside of your scapula there. Hmm, that doesn't look like that position is correct, but ignore that for now. Anyway, cool. Thanks, everybody. Um, you, know, you can clip curve something sculpt on that generated flat surface and bring the shape back with a clip brush with the four back I ha has somebody done that I'm trying to remember somebody so it seems like some sticking on the back of my brain where somebody did that to do something very specific that was really neat but I can't remember yeah no, I'm gonna use this for it but it's there I, I'm trying to re I'm trying to remember that I think I had somebody did do something with that that was really neat, but I can't remember the situation. But yeah, excellent. Thank you for uh, shutting that out, Hair Vorgand. Uh, there you go. Uh, that I don't have any tattoos, but that might be my first tattoos. Is just tattoo all the names so I can look at myself and be like, oh, that's what that thing is all over my face. But anyway. Uh, oh, uh, none of these are for sale, but... Get out an anatomy book and then just take this Ryan Kingsland model here. And he might actually have this available as like the high res. These are all kind of um, dumb, or they're, they're just decimated down. But for example, if you have this here, you can say, okay, give me this, tap on X symmetry. Let's control tap this point in history. We're going to say zero mesh, same, adaptive size down quite a bit. And then we've got new geometry. We're going to hit Control D, and then we're going to say Project History. That's under your Project menu here. And then Control D, Project History. And then now you have, if we go into solo mode here, you have like a little bit better geometry layout. You have all your detail back, and now you can go through here, and you can say like turn on RGB and red, and say. Oops, turn off Z add. Let's hit Control D one more time. Deltoid and your deltoid here. So you have your your clavicle. Let's turn off solo mode. Your clavicle and your scapula. And then you're gonna have a head that is like this here, and then your scapula head, and then your this deltoid head. And in fact, this muscle body is gonna be this is actually going to be pretty flat, I think, on, on the body. So don't expect like a big round thing here. It's going to be kind of ligamenty through here, actually. Kind of ligamenty through here attached, and then the muscle body will pick up a little bit more here ish. So, and then, okay, everybody, pop quiz. What do they call this? kind of muscle overlapping. I think it's multi-pinnate? Multi-pinnate? They're, they're very specifically, they, they wrap specifically, so that's not correct, but uh, I think it's called multi-pinnate. Uh, I don't remember. Something like that. But anyway, yeah, there you go. Do it. Go go get your books out. Yeah, we're total meatbags. Cool. All right, thanks again, everybody. Uh, 